Hey guys, I'm Joe, and this is an iPhone 2G. This is the first generation iPhone that Apple put out. And I want to take a look at this in today's point of view. And how usable would this really be in 2015? Okay, so if we go to the lock screen, it's very familiar. It's slide to unlock just like it's always been. There obviously is no Touch ID. So this group of icons that you'll be greeted with is very familiar. You know, I, I want to say that this is version, this is iOS version 3.1.3. .3. This is the newest that Apple allows to be installed on this. So the operating system is 2009 and the phone itself is from 2007. So let's go into camera. Now this camera sensor is only 2 megapixels. It performs very poorly in low light. And it's very slow. So if we go to take a shot, you can see how slow that was. And it's not that good quality. It's really not very good quality. So just thought I'd point that out. Let's go back home. So you can see we still have messages. I want to say that iMessage was not available yet at this point. So it was all SMS. So you would not be able to use that handy iMessage over internet. In order to text people, you had to use SMS, which is regular texting. YouTube is no longer a pre-installed app. You can easily download it from the App Store, though. And it is much better than this is. This one is very, very poorly designed. I don't like it at all. I never really did, if I'm being completely honest with you. Go home. Go home. Now, the reason it did that is because you can program the home button to do certain things. There was no multitasking back then, so you could have the double tap of the home button do a variety of things, including bringing up a little pop-up so you can manage your music playing and pausing and skipping songs or what I have it set to is you could double tap it to have it launch the camera which can be handy you could also have it set to launch the spotlight search which can also be found it's not pulling down it did not pull down to search until iOS 8 now you go all the way to the left and swipe one more time from the left most home screen and you'll get your spotlight search that's where it was so, phone is pretty much the same. You have the same buttons on the bottom. The keypad looks very different, but it still operates the same. But you could only use this phone on AT&T. That was the only drawback. So, you couldn't use this on a Sprint network or Verizon or anything like that. It had to be AT&T. Go back home. iTunes and the App Store are there. They were not there in iOS 1. The App Store actually did not exist until the iPhone 3G in 2008 so that's why I have it here because this is the third version of iOS the first version did not have an app store and it wasn't until a sub update I think it was 1.1 I'm not sure correct me if I'm wrong but there was a icon for iTunes but I believe it was just for downloading I don't think you could actually buy stuff I think you just downloaded the stuff that's already in your library again I'm not sure you can see mail is very familiar. It's the same concept. I don't have one set up yet. You have Safari, which is the old version of Safari, but it still works over Wi-Fi. Only eight tabs open maximum, but it still works for what you need it to do. There was a separate Google search bar at this point, from the, separate from the URL. And this phone... If you were planning on to using it over cellular, you're only going to get 2G reception. This would not even work with 3G. So 2G is very, very slow. And people even say that 3G is slow now, which I would agree with. In fact, I even find 4G slow because I'm on LTE for most of the time. So this is going to be very slow. Now the last thing I want to touch on is the apps that are compatible. There are very, very, very few apps that are still compatible with iOS 3. Most of the apps on the App Store require 
iOS 7 or 8 even. So you're not going to find too much for you to be able to download on here. I was I tried to find a way to download like an old version that was still compatible, but you can't do that. There was a game I could find called Endless Race. It's just a simple racing game. I'm not going to demonstrate it in the sake of time, but that was just about the only app I could find that I thought was worth trying to download. Calculator, they still had. It looked pretty similar. Whoa, sorry about that. It looked pretty similar to what it did now, to what it does now. Same button layout. It just looked different as far as the style goes. So, that, if you open iPod, that is your music. So, you could still play your music. The speaker does not get very loud at all. The speaker's not very loud, but you still work still work with your current iTunes. So this is not something that I've had. I just recently got this phone and I downloaded some music from my iTunes onto the phone. So if you're interested and you have this kind of phone, you are able to do that. So that's pretty much it. If you so Concluding my original question of would this still work in 2015, sure. All you got to do is take it to an AT&T store, have them pop a SIM card in it for you, and you can use it. But it's going to be very slow because you can only use it on 2G network, and this thing is even slow on Wi-Fi because it's an older Wi-Fi radio. There is Bluetooth in it, so if you want to use a Bluetooth speaker or headset or something, you can do that. It's just as easy to pair as it is now. But if you want to use this in 2015, it's going to be very slow and you're, there's not going to be very many apps compatible with it. So another, a few of the drawbacks include no control center, which did not come until iOS 8. And believe it or not, there was no notification center from the top. None at all. So if you get a text, you just got to remember, oh yeah, I have a text. Or you just see the little one next to the messages. There's no place that was uniform that held all of your notifications in one spot. So there are definitely some drawbacks to using this in 2015, but it has the potential to be a lot of fun. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you have a suggestion for some kind of video you want me to make, go ahead and let me know with a comment below. Anyway, guys, I'm Joe Green, and I will see you next Monday.